اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لی صدری ویسر لی امری وحل الاختتم من لسان یفقہ قولی اخلاص Sincerity of intention Fulfilling the commandments of Allah Ta'ala only to please Him Verses of Quran Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says Yes, whoever surrenders himself to Allah that is, follows Allah's religion of Islam and performs good deeds with sincerity His reward is with His Rabb On such shall be no fear and nor shall they grieve Baqarah chapter 2 verses 112 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and only spend to please Allah chapter 2 verse 272 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says whosoever desires the reward of his good deeds in this world we shall give him of it and whosoever desires a reward in the hereafter we shall give him of it and we shall shortly reward the grateful Ali Imran chapter 3 verse 145 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and addresses of Saleh alayhi salam to his people no reward do I ask of you for my tabligh my reward is only with the sustainer of the worlds tabligh means invitation Ashura chapter 26 verses 145 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and that which you give in zakah only to please Allah these are those who increase their wealth and reward Ar-Rum chapter 30 verse 39 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and call on him meaning Allah with true devotion Surah Araf chapter 7 verse 29 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says their flesh and their blood of sacrifices of cows goats or camels Reach not Allah but your piety and internal aspirations towards Allah reach Him. Surah Hajj chapter 22 verse 37 Hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Indeed Allah does not look at your faces and possessions but He looks at your hearts and your deeds. Muslim Indeed, Allah does not look at your faces and possessions, but He looks at your hearts and your deeds. Note, it means the decision of Allah's pleasure will not be based upon your faces and possessions, but upon your hearts and deeds as to how much sincerity was in your heart. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu narrated, I heard Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam saying, Verily, the reward of deeds depend upon intentions and indeed every man shall receive what he intended for thus he whose migration was for Allah and his messenger so his migration will be considered for Allah and his messenger he whose migration was towards the world or to be married to some woman this migration will be considered to be what he migrated for Bukhari Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Undoubtedly upon resurrection people will be treated according to their intentions Undoubtedly upon resurrection people will be treated according to their intentions Ibn Majah Aisha radiallahu anha narrates that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said An army will invade the Kaaba and when it reaches a barren plain its men, from the first to the last, will be swallowed up by the earth. She says that I asked, O Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how would the first and the last of them be swallowed up by the earth, when among them would be traders and people who were not party to them? He said, the first and the last one of them would be swallowed up by the earth, and when they will be resurrected, they will be judged according to their intentions. Bukhari Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said You have indeed left behind in Medina people who will have an equal share and reward in no matter whatsoever path you travel or whatsoever you spend and whatever valley you cross. The Sahaba asked, O Rasulullah, 
how can they be with us when they are in Medina? He said, they intended to go out with you but were detained by a valid reason. Abu Dawood Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah narrates that among those sayings which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has related from his Rabb azzawajal, Allah has spelled out good deeds and bad ones to the appointed angels over you. He then explained it. If anyone intends to do a good deed but does not do it, Allah enters for him in his record as a complete good deed. And if he intends to do a good deed and does it, Allah enter for him in his record as 10 to 700 and many more times as much. If anyone intends to do a bad deed and does not do it because of fear of Allah, Allah enters it for him in his record as a complete good deed. But if he intends to do it and does it, Allah records it for him as one bad deed. Bukhari Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A man said, Indeed, I will give sadaqah quietly. He came out with his sadaqah and placed it in the hands of a thief. In the morning, people began to talk and say, Sadaqah was given to a thief. The man said, O oh Allah, all praise is for you. I will indeed give sadaqah. And he came out with sadaqah and placed it in the hands of an adulteress. In the morning, people began to talk and say, Sadaqah was given to an adulteress last night. The man said, O oh Allah, all praise is for you in giving sadaqah to an adulteress. I'll surely give sadaqah. He came out with sadaqah and placed it in the hands of a rich man. In the morning, people began to talk and say, Sadaqah was given to a rich man. The man said, O oh Allah, all praise is for you in giving sadaqah to a thief, an adulteress and a rich man. He then had a dream in which he was told that his sadaqah, which was made to be given to a thief, may perhaps result in his refraining from stealing. To the adulteress, so that she may perhaps refrain from adultery, and to the rich man, so that he may perhaps pay heed and spend from what Allah has given him. Bukhari. Note, because of this man's sincerity, Allah accepted all three of his sadaqah. Oh. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah narrates, I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Three people of an ummah before you set out on a journey and they took refuge in the cave to spend the night. A rock slid from the mountain and blocked the cave. They said, Indeed, you cannot be relieved from this rock, except that you invoke Allah on the basis of your good deeds. So one of the men said, O oh Allah, I had very aged parents and I would not give milk to my children and other members of my family and slaves before my parents. One day I went far away in quest of something and I could not return to my parents because they had slept. I milked the evening milk for them and found that they were asleep. I disliked to give milk to my children and other members of my family and slaves to drink before them. So I stood by them with the bowl of milk in my hand, waiting for them to wake up till it dawned. Then they woke up and they drank their evening's share of the milk. O oh Allah! If I had done so to please you, relieve us from the distress imposed upon us by this rock. So the rock moved a little, resulting in a small opening, but not enough for them to get out. Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then said, The second man said, O oh Allah, I had a cousin whom I loved more than anybody. I desired to satisfy my lust with her, but she refused. Subsequently, a year of famine forced her to approach me. I gave her 120 dinars on the condition that she would yield herself to me. So she agreed. And when I was able to get a hold on her, she said, It is not permitted for you to break the seal of virginity except by its lawful right, that is, by marriage. I restrained myself from falling upon her and I walked away from her, though she was the most beloved of people to me, and I left the dinars with her. O oh Allah, if I had done so to please you, then relieve us from the distress that we are suffering. So again, the rock moved a little, resulting in a small opening, but they were still unable to get out. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that the third one invoked, O oh Allah, I hired the services of some laborers and paid all of them their wages except one. 
who departed without taking what was due to him. I invested his wage in a business and the business pro prospered immensely. He came back to me after a long time and said, O slave of Allah, pay me my due. I replied, All that you see is yours, camels, cattle, sheep and slaves. He said, O slave of Allah, do not make fun of me. So I said, I am not joking with you. So he took all of it and drove away, not leaving anything. O oh Allah, if I had done so to please you, then receive, then relieve us from this distress. So the rock moved aside and they got out walking freely. Bukhari Abu Kapshal and Mari Radhi Allahu Anhu narrates, I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, I swear by Allah upon three things and then I will especially tell you something afterwards. So remember it well. Then he said, The wealth of a man does not decrease by giving sadaqah. If a person endures oppression patiently, Allah increases his honor. If a person opens the door of begging, Allah opens the door of poverty upon him or said something similar. Then he said, I'm going to tell you something, so remember it well. Then he said, There are four types of people in the world. One, the slave of Allah, whom Allah has bestowed wealth and knowledge. He fears Allah and regarding his wealth and through his knowledge, he spends to strengthen relationship and he knows that there is a right of Allah in it. He will be in the best of ranks. Second, the slave of Allah, whom Allah has given knowledge but no wealth, and he is sincere in his intention. He says, had I been given wealth, I would have spent it just like the other person. And for his intention, both will be given the same reward. Third, the slave of Allah, whom Allah has given wealth but no knowledge, and he spends his wealth haphazardly, and he does not fear his Rabb in respect of it. He, is, he does not discharge his obligations of kinship, and does not know that Allah has a right on it. He will be in the worst of ranks. Fourth, the slave of Allah, whom Allah has given neither wealth nor knowledge, says, Had I been given wealth, I would have spent it just like the other third person. For his intention, the burden of both will be alike. Then we see. A man from Medina narrates that Muawiyah radiallahu anhu wrote a letter to Aisha radiallahu anha asking her, Write me and advise me, but do not make it lengthy. So Aisha radiallahu anha wrote to Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. After writing Salam, she wrote, I have indeed heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, He who seeks Allah's pleasure at the cost of people's anger, Allah will suffice him against the trouble caused by people. And he who seeks the pleasure of men at the cost of Allah's anger, Allah will leave him to the mercy of people. Wassalamu alaykum. May Allah's peace be upon you. The hadith is from Tirmidhi. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiru wa atubu ilayk, subhanaka rabbil izzati amma yasifun, wa salamun ala al-mursaleen, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimeen, la ilaha illa Allah, muhammadur rasulullah.